We absolutely have to learn the lessons from both what gave rise to the ugly ideology of this individual uh, and what environments allow that to grow and to potentially spread. But I distinguish from that from fulfilling his wish uh, to gain notoriety out of his heinous act. Uh, and so that is the distinction that I make. When you heard the news of what happened, um, what were your thoughts? I don't, I don't think any, uh, any leader anywhere uh, can really prepare themselves for, for those moments. Um, but it's fair to say I'm, I happen to be, though, the Prime Minister of a, of a particularly peaceful nation, an inclusive nation, a place where 200 ethnicities and 160 languages are spoken. We pride ourselves uh, on being well known as a welcoming place. In fact, the terrorist who, uh, who brought this act to New Zealand chose us for this terrorist act because we are all of those things. And so shock was my, uh, was of course my immediate reaction, you know, that how could this happen here um, to us uh, and to this community? I mean, you're pushing for tighter gun controls and yes. you want to do it as fast as possible. Yes. Where are the gaps? What are the loopholes that need to be plugged to prevent this kind of thing happening? Again? One is very obvious. And that is the availability of military-style semi-automatic weapons in New Zealand. Uh, and yes, we have uh, gun use for legitimate purposes, particularly in our rural community, but my view is that they will absolutely support us in tackling the availability of weapons that are very obviously designed to take lives. How concerned are you of a rising tide of white nationalism in New Zealand. How bad is that situation getting, do you think? My call would be a global one. You know, I'm very clear here to make the distinction that yes, this was an Australian citizen, but that is not to say that we do not have ideology in New Zealand that would be an affront to the majority of New Zealanders, that would be utterly rejected by the majority, the vast majority of New Zealanders. But we still have a responsibility to weed it out where it exists and make sure that we never create an environment where it can flourish. But I would make that a global call. You know, what New Zealand experienced here was violence brought against us by someone who grew up and learnt their ideology somewhere else. So actually, if we want to make sure that globally we are a safe and tolerant and inclusive world, we cannot think about this in terms of boundaries. Uh, and, and that's the kind of leadership I think we need to, to see on this issue. How do you bring this community back together? You know, I would first acknowledge that actually that this was a community that was by and large, it was already together. My job is to ensure it's not shattered apart. And you're convinced you can succeed in that? Absolutely, because that's what New Zealand is. Okay, Prime Minister, thank you. Thank you.